we take a look at the Los Angeles Lakers and we glance at their roster, this is almost the same exact team from last year, the same exact rotation. If I'm not mistaken, the only player that was a part of last year's rotation that is no longer a member of the Los Angeles Lakers is Turian Prince. And with that being said, with this being almost the same exact team from last year with a few rookie additions and Dalton Connect and Bronny James Jr., this is the same team as far as the roster goes but when we look at the identity and we look at the culture of this Lakers team it is completely different and that's because they made a major change not a major change in the roster but a major change in the front office and the organization bringing in JJ Reddick a former NBA player one of the best NBA shooters in NBA history and one of the best college basketball players in um, basketball history they bring in JJ Reddick which raised the uh, it raised a lot of eyebrows across the media a lot of people have mixed emotions about JJ Reddick becoming the head coach for the Los Angeles uh, Lakers for a multitude of reasons it's his first time becoming a head coach being a coach for one of the most decorated franchises in NBA history and then also not too long before he was handed the job as a Los Angeles Laker while the season was going on LeBron James and JJ Reddick they had a podcast together where they were literally breaking down the game of basketball in, in a language and a code that was foreign to a, to a lot to a lot of us and I watch a lot of basketball a lot of basketball and um, I thought I, I thought and I thought I knew a lot of the terms until I heard LeBron James and JJ Reddick talking about the game of basketball so um, that turned a lot of people's ears it turned a lot of people head um a lot of people heads a lot of people think jj reddick was handed that job by lebron james but nonetheless no matter how jj reddick got that job if that was the case or if the lakers um really just selected him it was a great move about the los angeles lakers because like we said even though this roster is um a, almost the exact same from last season the way that the Los Angeles Lakers have looked so far through three games, and you can tell a lot from three games, especially with the three games that the Los Angeles Lakers have had, but through these three through these first three games, this looks like a completely Los Angeles Lakers team. And and that was a question mark last year with Darvin Ham. You know, did he have the focus? Did he have the attention of the players, of the best players of the Los Angeles Lakers? And was this talented team, even though they made it to a conference finals just a season ago and then to the playoffs once again this most previous season, um, you know, it was still that question mark was, is, this, is all the talent on this team being optimized? Because when you have LeBron James and Anthony me Davis, two of the top 10 players in the NBA today, is championship or bust. So if you're not getting that championship, that question mark of is that is this talent being optimized, that question mark is going to be there if you don't reach the NBA Finals. And we all know here we are, and the Lakers have decided to let go of Darvin Ham. So now they bring in J.J. Reddick to see if he is the guy that can get more out of these players, fully optimize this talent, and boy, through these first three games, is it looking that way. Now today... We're not going to be diving too much into the numbers. The only numbers we're going to be looking at really is just the win and loss column. And right now, the Los Angeles Lakers are 3-0. and And what's so, um, the first thing that stands out to me is the competition, the competition that the Los Angeles Lakers have faced so far. And excuse me, and how they've been successful. We know the Los Angeles Lakers these last few years, towards the beginning of the year, when they play against a good ball club, they struggled pretty badly, and um, there were some games where they even got blown out. And to see the Los Angeles Lakers, they're 3-0 and right now. Their first game of the season, they faced the Minnesota Timberwolves. They faced the Phoenix Suns in the next game and then their most recent game last night came against the sacramento kings where they were able to pick up the w now like we just said the los angeles lakers they probably haven't gotten off to a start like this probably since the 2019-2020 NBA season where they won the championship. Since then, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster for the Los Angeles Lakers as far as their identity, as far as the health of the team. So it's been a lot going on since that year. But 
to see the Los Angeles Lakers get off to a great start this year, um, it's just a great sign for JJ Redick, and it seems like he's he's um he's about to have a great season, his first year as head coach for the Los Angeles Lakers. So that's really the first thing that I've observed about the Los Angeles Lakers so far. For it to be so early in the season, and I'm a huge LeBron James fan, so I watch almost every single Lakers game. So it's a really big deal to see them to be three and zero to play against three of the better teams in the Western Conference in, in competitive games. And then in the Phoenix Suns game, falling down 22 points after they couldn't miss a single three-pointer. And they couldn't miss a single three-pointer in the first half. Huge props to J.J. Redick for keeping those guys poised, staying calm, and weathering that storm. It's very hard to, when teams are shooting like that, you fall down 22 points. It's very hard to, to come back to get that momentum, to get that momentum back. And I think they did have a little bit of help. I remember when the game, <laughs> during the game, uh, Freddie, Freddie Freeman, I believe that's his name. I don't watch baseball. I think his name is Freddie Freeman. He hit the walk-off home run in, like, the overtime ending for the Los Angeles Dock. Los Angeles Dodgers and the crowd went wild and I think that might have did something for the Los Angeles Lakers. Some of that magic might have rubbed off on them. But nonetheless, how they looked in these first three games against playoff competition teams and they were able to get these wins, I think it says a lot about J.J. Reddy. And now we can look into what we're seeing out on the basketball court. Now, uh, like I said, like, like I said, listening to LeBron James and J.J. Redick, the way they were talking about the game of basketball, bringing up all these different terms that um, I never heard about, they definitely taught me a lot. Um, you know, J.J., you, you could tell J.J. Redick, he knows his X's and O's, and that's exactly what we've been saying for, from the Los Angeles Lakers so far. And I noticed this in the preseason. It's just a, a lot more spacing, and, and it's crazy. They're having great spacing. But they're not really. They're still not focusing on taking that three-point shot. They have great spacing, but it's spacing for what they want to do in their offense, and that's getting down, getting downhill, and still dominating at the free throw line. So I love that. And then the actions that he's running. He's running some very beautiful plays. That's making the game a lot easier for his best players now. Um, one thing I noticed so far at the beginning of this, se uh, this season, not seeing too much stagnant offense of just watching LeBron James and Anthony Davis, and especially for AD. AD has been uh, very monstrous his first three games, 35 points in his first two games. He joins the, it's only two other Lakers in NBA history to start the season off, getting 35 points in back-to-back -back games is Jerry West and Elgin Baylor. So he put himself in some pretty elite company, and in his most recent game, he had 29 points against the Sacramento Kings. But watching AD so far this season, it's been I've I, I really been loving it because I'm not seeing him get too many um, too many buckets where he has to post up for 10, 15 seconds. Um, J.J. Redick is running a lot of actions, a lot of sets where Anthony Davis, he's getting the ball in position where he can go immediate. Um, he can immediately go up or he's catching lobs. He's just catching easy uh, passes around the rim and going up and dunking a basketball. And, of course, A.D. is so talented. He's still going to have those post-up plays, and he's still going to have plays where he has to improvise and make a tough jump shot. But what I'm liking is all the easy looks that he's getting and when you're getting those easy looks you don't have to exert as much energy on the um on the, you don't have to exert as much energy because playing in the post playing in the post doing all that banging that takes up a lot of stamina so i'm loving what i'm seeing with that same thing with lebron james so far this season up into this game against the sacramento kings um it, it seems like he's been off the ball a lot more and they're not depending on him to have the ball in his hands 100 percent of the time we seeing jj reddick i don't know if you guys heard but he said he is a huge fan of austin reeves and we just been seeing him getting utilized a lot more and austin reeves looks like he's still continu uh, continuing to improve his offensive game he looks very very comfortable with the basketball in his hands, making decisions for himself and making decisions for his teammates. So I'm loving this balance that that JJ Redick has right now. He's he's um, he's implemented some ball movement into this Los Angeles Lakers offense, and it's been working. Um, it's been working like a charm. It's been working. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's been working like a charm. And I think you look over these last few years, you got to have a good balance of that ball movement and then those moments in the game where your best players, they just have to beat the opposing team's best defenders in a one-on-one -on -one situation. We've seen that with the Denver Nuggets. 
on their last championship run. So good at ball movement in the first three quarters. And then once the fourth quarter gets there, they let Jamal Murray and um, Nikola Jokic run that two-man game, and everything flows after that. Same thing with the Boston Celtics. Tremendous ball movement on their championship run, knocking down as many three-pointers as they can in the first three quarters. And then that last quarter is Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, beating the opposing team's best defender one-on-one. -on -one. You got to have that great balance, and that's what I'm seeing so far with the Los Angeles Lakers. We're seeing them get so many more so many more easy looks in, half, in the half-court situations, and then you still have those moments where um, LeBron James, one of the greatest players in NBA history, we saw it last night against the Sacramento Kings where he just gets super hot, and he can take over a ball game. Same thing with Anthony Davis, but it's good. It's a good thing to have that, to have that ball movement because now we're seeing – these Los Angeles Lakers role players, they're looking so much better. Rui, Hari, um, Rui Hachimura is looking really good this season. Jackson Hayes is looking really good this season. Austin Reeves is looking really good this season. D'Angelo De Russell just had a great game after a couple of slow starts to the season. So um, all of those little things matter. And I think J.J. Redick, through these three games, he has shown that he could be a, a really good coach in the NBA and that he also knows his X's and O's. So um, those two things, those are the two things that has really stood out to me on the basketball court. And then also it just seems like the Los Angeles Lakers, they just have a different energy, a different vibe around them. And that's no disrespect to Darvin Ham sometimes. Uh, uh, um, and, I, you know, as a kid, you don't realize how important a coach is. You know, as I'm starting to become um, a grown man myself and becoming more of an adult each and each and every day, having that leader in the locker room, having that leader in the organization, um, it definitely matters and it impacts the entire team. So um, that's what I've been noticing. And then also things are going to get even better for the Los Angeles Lakers because right now they're not even at full strength. They're still missing Jared Vanderbilt, who's one of the best um, defenders in the NBA. And they're also missing Christian Wood. And I would love to see Christian Wood under this new system in this new offense with J.J. Redick because it seems like J.J. is an expert at getting guys involved and getting guys easy looks. So um, I'm really excited for the Los Angeles Lakers. I love LeBron James so much. He's the only player. And when he comes to Detroit, or when Detroit goes to him, if the if my Pistons lose to LeBron James, you know I don't I don't hold it I don't hold it against them. I'm I'm fine with it. But um, that's what I want to talk about with you guys today. What the Los Angeles Lakers are doing right now, it's very impressive. Same same roster, but they look completely different. But um, if you guys enjoy, please leave a like, comment down below if you agree or disagree, and then subscribe. Subscribe for more weekly content. We do this all the time, man. And that's curtains.